بسم اللہ الرحمن الرحیم تعمیر شخصیت کے طریقہ کار میں ہم آخری لیکچر پہ آ گئے ہیں کہ جو خطرات لینا اور ان کا حل کیا ہے جس کو انٹرپرائز رسک مینجمنٹ کہا جاتا ہے آپ کو یاد ہوگا ہم نے پہلے لیکچر سے ہی اپنا ایک پورا پرسنالٹی ڈیولپمنٹ کے مختلف پہلوؤں سے ہمیں اپنی پرسنالٹی کو بہتر کرنا تھا اور اس کے لیے ہم نے کوشش کی تو اب ہم آخری لیکچر پہ آ رہے ہیں اور اس میں وہی برین سٹارمنگ کے لیے دو سوال آپ کی خدمت میں عرض کرتا ہوں آپ کو آج تک زندگی میں کیا خطرات آئے ہیں اور ان کا اپنے حل کیا کیا یہ سوال بس سمپل اب یہ اصل میں ایک ٹیکنیکل یہ ایک پورا ڈسپلن بنا بن تو پہلے گیا تھا تھیری کی حد تک لیکن پریکٹیکلی یہ ٹو تھاؤزینڈ فائیو سکس کے زمانے میں یہ عام ہوا شروع ہوا اچھا پاکستان میں تو ابھی تک نہیں ہوا تو لیکن امریکہ اور یورپ میں تو ٹو فور فائیو سکس کے اندر یہ آ گیا تھا تو اس وقت یہ انٹرپرائز ریسورسز پلاننگ کا ایک سلسلہ جب آیا اور پھر اس کے بعد انٹرپرائز رسک مینجمنٹ کا سلسلہ آیا تو اس وقت تھا تو اس وقت ٹو تھاؤزینڈ سیون میں میں نے سعودی عرب میں کئی کمپنیز کے جو ایگزیکٹو تھے ان سب کو اکٹھا کیا تھا اور وہاں پہ کیے پورا ای آر ایم انٹرپرائز رسک مینجمنٹ پہ ایک لیکچر کیا تھا اب ظاہر ہے کہ وہ انگلش میں تھا تو وہ میں آپ کی خدمت میں شیئر کر رہا ہوں اب سن لیجئے جتنا بھی سمجھ میں آ جائے تو آپ کے کام کی چیز ہو تو لے لیجئے نہیں ہو تو بے شک پھینک دیجئے گا اور اگر آپ کا انٹرسٹ ہو لیکن یہ انگلش کی یہ کئی ٹرمینالوجیز اس میں کلیئر نہ ہو تو بلا تکلف آپ ای میل کر دیجئے گا جو بھی سوالات آپ کے ذہن میں پیدا ہوں تو وہ کر لیجئے گا اور اگر نہ ہو تو آپ اگر فرمائیں گے تو پھر میں اردو میں یہ لیکچر بھی کر لوں گا لیکن یہ ابھی تو اس وقت انگلش میں ہے ٹو تھاؤزینڈ سیون میں یہ بنا ہوا ہے یہ لیکچر تو وہی آپ کی خدمت میں عرض کر رہا ہوں تو اب اسی کی بات شروع کرتے ہیں جدا Before starting, I would like to introduce you about uh, this seminar, this idea, and then conduct uh, the details of uh, enterprise risk management. Actually, the idea behind uh, this seminar was uh, that most of our clients, uh, they have not yet got too much exposure about the discipline of uh, risk management. So we took this initiative uh, to just uh, inform our clients about uh, the discipline of risk management. First day sessions, they will be uh, basically more oriented towards the concepts of uh, risk management first of all this first presentation will be about enterprise risk management and second presentation by our uh, valued partner from Kuwait office will be specifically about information risk management after that in second half today we will study certain case studies that how ERM and IRM enterprise risk management and information risk management how they were implemented by various uh, national and multinational companies tomorrow's part will be towards about the specific areas or specific ERM products like information systems audit like internal audit like internal controls evaluation and business continuity and disaster recovery management. To start with, now we can uh, discuss the details uh, of enterprise risk management. The definition of ERM is that it's the discipline by which an organization in any industry assesses, controls, exploits, finances and monitors. So there are five things 
risk assessment controls over the risk, exploitation of risk, arranging finance for the risk and monitoring the risk. So that's the risk management discipline. From all sources for the purpose of increasing the organization's short and long term value to its stakeholders. So this is definition from uh, Casualty Actuarial Society which is uh, the pioneer organization in ER. A second definition from COSO. ERA is the process affected by an entity's board of directors, management and other personnel applied in a strategy setting and across the enterprise designed to identify potential events that may affect the entity and manage risk to the to be within its risk appetite. We will explain these terms to provide reasonable assurance regarding the achievement of entity goals. So actually the, this definition we will study just at the end of the session. So our structure of uh, today's uh, presentations will be that uh, we will uh, explain you all these concepts and definitely we would like uh, to share your knowledge regarding uh, these areas and your practical expertise into that. So at the end of the session we'll have a group discussion session. So your questions, your comments, your experiences that will share it in these sessions. Now we start from the conceptual framework of enterprise risk management and then we will see step by step how this risk management discipline is uh, working within the organizations. Two frameworks again this casualty actuarial society framework and COSO framework. Both of them are major uh, or uh, world leaders in this discipline. So just I will uh, show you the frameworks developed by these two organizations and then we will uh, take one of them to study this discipline to just have an idea about the ERM process, how it works. This is CAS model or uh, KULT Actuarial Society's model. According to them, First of all, we'll have to establish the context of ERN. What's that? We will explain that. Next step is risk identification. Then is analyze and quantify the risks, integrate the risks, assess and prioritize the risks, treat and exploit the risk and after that monitoring and review. So this is the process. On four corners of that, you will see different elements of risk, financial risk, hazards, operational risks, and strategic risks. So, all of them uh, we discuss now. COSO framework, committee of uh, sponsoring organizations, they have also developed a model like that. If you see the vertical dimension, of uh, this model. So this internal environment, objective setting, event identification, risk assessment, all these steps, these are more or less the same as steps identified by the previous model, but some areas are elaborated more and some are condensed, so almost it's the same. The vertical direction is organization's objectives and risks related to strategic operations, reporting and compliance. And the third dimension is different levels of an organization like a subsidiary, then a business unit, then the corporate. So this is the third dimension of the risk. If we merge these two models, steps of risk management, they will almost be the same in both models but on the other side risks two categories are added one is information risk and we will talk more uh, in our next session about that we have a specialized session for that due to its significance 
and second is compliance risk. So, especially in present world, after the development of this Sargans Oxley and Basel framework and a lot of uh, different frameworks and legislation in many countries. So, this compliance risk has also increased. So, now uh, we start with the risk categories. We would like uh, and we will definitely enjoy your participation into that and that will be highly appreciated that if you please share your experience into that. We start from different uh, types of and uh, different elements of the risk. Okay, so we start from that, from the hazards. So, we will really appreciate if uh, you participate in identifying different types of hazards. So, that will be a pleasure for us that if you share uh, your uh, experience and your feelings with us. So, can you please just identify different elements of hazards, different types of hazards. So, just from your side, we would like to have Yes. Fire. Fire is the hazard. Yes, please. Yeah. Theft. Okay. Yes, please. So, any other idea about that? Fraud. Okay. So, if we see that, actually hazards are usually natural risks or man-made risks even. But these risks are beyond the control of an organization. So, like fire, like tornadoes, like storms, hurricanes, we cannot do anything to, to stop them. These are natural. But we can escape from them. We can manage ourselves. We can prevent ourselves from these risks. Other is financial risk. So, most uh, of you guys uh, that we know that you are from financial background, so definitely you will know much better about these risks. So, please can you fraud. help us? Fraud. Fraud. Mm -hmm. fraud. Okay. Yes, please. <coughs> yes, please. Sorry? <coughs> Interest rate. Okay. Interest rate. Interest <coughs> risk. Okay. Fine. Yes. Please. Sorry? Misuse of, Misuse of funds. Okay. <laughs> fine. Excellent. Yes, please. Yes, please. Uh, sorry? Credit. Credit. Credit risk is there. Credit risk. Fine, liquidity risk is there. So, like adverse movements and exchange rates. So, especially the organizations who are more uh, exposed to foreign currencies. This is not the specific case here in Saudi Arabia because most of the foreign currency transactions are in US dollars and there is a fixed exchange rate between US dollar and Saudi Arabia. But suppose if you are dealing in other currencies like Euro or uh, Japanese yen or like that, so adverse movement in that risk. Then is uh, as uh, our friend identified the interest rate risk. So adverse movement if you are using floating rate in your investment. So that's a risk. Adverse movement in price and costs. Then your credit risk. Obvious. It's very obvious. Liquidity risk and bankruptcy risk. The difference between these two is that bankruptcy risk is more uh, oriented towards long-term solvency of a product. Whereas liquidity risk is short-term. So, if you are unable to find short-term funds. Operational risk. So, related to risks related to business operations. So, please help me in uh, that as well. Identifying these things. So, like uh, many of our colleagues identified fraud, yes please, poor management, so loss resulting from that, yes please, sorry, quality, yes definitely, this is fine, fine, so look like employee fraud, labor relations and your production breakdowns, your quality issues, your supply chain issues, your distribution issues, so all risks related to the operations of the business. So, this is. 
then strategic risk which is more towards from the environment and focused on the long term strategy of the business. So these risks like for example fluctuations in demand, entry of a new competitor, technological advances, uh, economic cycles, adverse legislation. So all these risks which are in social, political, economic environment of the company in which the company is operating. So the risk of uh, these areas. Then is information risk. I'll not touch this too much in my presentation because uh, it will uh, be covered in detail in our next session by Mr. Sankar. So you can see incorrect information, then unavailability of required information, malicious attacks, cyber crimes, so all these risks are there. And the last one is compliance risk. So you can see that if we will not comply with a specific law, so penalties, reputation losses, claims by third parties. So if, uh, for example, we have information of our customer and we have disclosed it, so you can sue us. And if it's illegal, so we may face claims, loss rates and lack of understanding the law, inability to comply with the law. And losing patents or legal rights. So these are examples, just examples so you can add more risks into all these categories with your knowledge, with your experience. So this is not a complete list, these are simply examples. Now we start how we will implement enterprise risk management in our business. This is first step. Establish context this is first step. So establish context, we are, if you see the model, we merged the two models of CAS and COSO. So you can see that we are now at first step. We are going to start the ERM implementation project. So what to do in that? First of all, we'll have to define the relationship of organization with, with its external internal environment. That's the first step. SWOT analysis, I'll discuss it in a detail. Identify the stakeholders, not only the shareholders, the parties which have any interest in your organization, like your management, your employees, your bankers, creditors, customers, so all the parties who are interested in your business. Then organizations, objectives and strategies will have to understand that before implementing Identify key performance indicators, we'll discuss it later on. Identify relevant risk categories, six risk categories we have discussed. You can add even a new category if it's important to you. Identify existing risk management practices. This is not the case that an organization is not performing any risk management at all. That's not the case. So that's why. It's uh, essential that whatever existing practices are there, we should have knowledge of that and determine the risk appetite of management. This term is very important, risk appetite. You know that some people, they are much oriented towards taking risk. So some people, they want to take risk and there are some people who want to avoid risk. This is mentality of people or attitude of people towards the risk. In addition to that, not only the mental attitude, but in addition to that, a person who wants to take risk, whether he is able to take risk or not. Like for example, if a person enjoys climbing on mountains, so he has a risk appetite to take risk. But on the other hand, whether he is capable to do so, so capability plus attitude, two things are, they contribute towards the risk appetite of the management. Some organizations take more risk and definitely more risk means more return as well. Some people, some organizations, they want to 
avoid risks and minimize their risk. So, this is the risk appetite. Within the same SWOT analysis, you will be most of you will be aware about this that uh, strengths, weaknesses, opportunities, and threats. So, actually, this analysis is performed by marketing consultants for to develop the strategy of the company. But as a risk consultant or a risk expert, we will perform it from a risk management point of view. What are the strengths of organizations and what are opportunities outside the organization to exploit? This is positive risk. That what will go wrong if you will not exploit this risk? There is a risk there that an opportunity is there, a strength is there, you can do something and you are not doing. This is a positive risk. Negative risk is your weaknesses inside the organization and the threats outside your organization like adverse legislation, like earthquake, so whatever. Outside is threat and inside is weakness. So we perform this analysis from a risk management point of view, from that perspective. An example is there, just uh, for, just as a sample. But for example, for this uh, organization, their strength is that our trade people are exceptionally skilled. This is one of the strength of the company. On the other hand, weakness they have are tools of trade are second hand and may be unreliable. Like that. Example of opportunity that the only other plumber in town wants to retire. Your competitor is going to retire. So you will be the only company in that business. This is an opportunity. But the threat is somebody from out of town might by a retiring plumber's business. So, it may be a threat that some com a new competitor will arrive and there is a, a possibility that he may be more powerful than the old one. So, like that. So, from a risk management point of view, we, we perform this SWOT analysis. Stakeholders analysis. So, whoever are your stakeholders, so like management, employees, bankers, government, general public and potential investors and shareholders. So, what are their needs, what they want regarding the risk of the organization? This is an important issue. Then is key performance indicators. Actually, we are establishing the context first step. So, in order to do that, what are, how the organization is measuring the performance indicators. So, definitely I would like to share, uh, to get your expertise into that, that what type of performance indicators you are using in your organization. So, can you please just help me in that? Any key performance indicator used by your company? Net income. Net income. Net income. Net profit. So, or return on capital. That's one KPI. So, any... Uh, no, industry is per vehicle revenue. Weekly revenue, excellent. So, just was any other idea? Training. training, level of training of employees. So, excellent. Actually, there are, that's also a detailed topic for a full fledged seminar. So, just we are touching it. Return on capital employed, net profit, your customer satisfaction index, percentage of sales returns, your current ratio to measure your liquidity, then your financial and operating leverage ratio, HR training hours, so whatever your business function is, you can develop key performance indicators for that. What's the relation of KPI with the risk? Why you are thinking about that? The reason is that a risk may have a negative impact on this, any KPI. A risk may reduce the net profit. A risk may reduce the current ratio or a risk it can have a negative impact on the financial position of your company. So that's possible. So this was all about the first step. Now we are going to the second step, identification of risks. We already discussed that what are six categories of risk, these financial information and hazards, operational compliance strategy. So now we are going to identify specific risks. 
how to identify brainstorming sessions so you know very well the brainstorming perform risk surveys and conduct risk workshops so in risk workshops actually we will need people from all functions of the organization and from all levels from top to down the people come and they help in identifying the risk related to their area so this is this process is simply you can say uh, uh, just to identify the risks like for example a worker who is working on machines he may tell you that electricity electricity breakdown is a major risk for my area or the top management or the chief executive he tells that entry of a new competitor is a major risk for us or a financial a financial controller you can tell that employee fraud that one of the major risks so by that we can develop a detailed list of risks one way is review and discuss internal audit reports so these are very important to risk management because internal auditors as well as external auditors they have identified already identified certain risks so we can get review and discuss reports of other assurance group like health and safety like quality assurance like security management so all these areas will be uh, you can say available to us so this is risk universe actually uh, this diagram is just to explain the relationship between different types of risks if you see strategic risk so there are certain strategic risks like governance like market structure like shareholder and then there are certain risks so all these are related in a hierarchy so this is the risk universe another way of developing the risk universe is like you can see the risk category risk category is safety this is the category within this is the sub category of your area maybe of operational risk or hazards so then staff injury customer injury inability to respond to an emergency and breach of compliance with ohs uh, regulations so these are different sub risks and then you can further divide it and you can determine the cause why this risk is there like staff injury may be due to lack of training due to no policies related to health and safety or no hazard identification tools are available with you like for example no fire alarm is there and as a result of that some person may be injured so this is a way of developing the risk universe after doing this exercise you will start developing your risk register so risk register is there it's not complete if you see you have identified three risks like cyber crime cost associated with online transactions breach of regulations with any business legislation so we have specifically taken the example of uh, information risk so three risks we have identified only up till now we have identified the risks nothing else entire part is blank so impact consequence likelihood all this part is blank we have not yet identified this we have only identified the list of the risks so this is step number 2 once we have finished this actually this process is not you can say very hard step by step process there is a possibility that while you are on step number 3 you may need certain things from step number 1 you'll go back and get these things you or you may need certain things from step number 2 so it's an iterative process so like that now you will analyze and quantify the risks so third part we are a <coughs> risk is a product of two things likelihood and magnitude two dimensions of the risk likelihood is that probability of 
occurrence of that risk. Magnitude is the amount of loss caused by that risk. So if both are high, it means that risk is extreme. So extreme risk will be there. If magnitude is high and likelihood is low, then even then risk will be high. Like for example, an earthquake. So you may face an earthquake maybe once in 100 years. So very low likelihood. But the impact is very high on the other side. So that's why it's a high risk area. Like a road accident for an individual. It may occur maybe once or twice in his life. But its magnitude or its impact is too significant for that individual. So that's why it's a high risk area. Third is low magnitude but high probability. Like for example, breach of law. So you may uh, face certain minor penalties for that, but if your staff is not aware about that, so it means likelihood is too much. And fourth category is if both are low, so there's a low risk area. What are certain tools? Actually, we cannot go into too much details of each tool. I have just given a few examples of risk analysis tools like qualitative risk analysis usually that's the risk tool which we actually use with our clients so we do not uh, have uh, other uh, tools quantitative tools usually we do not use but normally we use the qualitative risk analysis fault tree analysis probability distribution this is a statistics uh, concept especially used for likelihood Maximum loss estimation, this we use for magnitude and risk and control metrics. I'll explain it. This is a qualitative risk analysis. So, what's going on here, if you see, on your right, at the right hand side there is likelihood. And here on vertical side you have various, uh, you have the magnitude, like significant, major, moderate and minor. So then you are plotting different risks that where each risk falls, like for example, significant loss of market share, the first box if you see here, it's within the commercial category and it's significant and its likelihood is almost certain. So it means it's an extreme risk, the highest risk. Similarly, if you see here that minor injury this second last so here likely magnitude is moderate but if you see the likelihood if it's almost certain it will be a high risk otherwise it will be a low risk so that's the normal tool we use uh, related to operational risk and related to information risk but and also related to strategic risk usually for financial risk quantitative tools are used Another tool, fire tree, uh, fault tree analysis. So, like fire breaks out. So, what are the possible reasons? <laughs> Leakage of flammable fluid or ignition sources near the fluid. So, then two reasons that spark exists and second is someone smoke. So, where is the fault? So, with these trees, you can find the exact fault of what was the exact reason for this risk. So, it was about example was about the fire. Probability distribution, this is for likelihood that, okay, there is a probability of 25% that our loss will be 10 million. 40% probability is there that our loss will be 15 million, like that. So with that, different scenarios we calculate and as a result of that, that okay, what will be the most probable loss in this scenario and that scenario, so different scenarios are developed in that. Maximum loss estimation. What will be the worst, worst scenario? If everything goes wrong, what will happen? What will be the loss? Like with earthquake, what will happen? That entire factory will be destroyed. And what's the cost? 45 million, for example, 45,000 million, like for example. A very expensive factory. 
terrorist attack, so 5,000 million we can suffer that loss, that some facilities will be damaged. Like, so this is the worst case scenario, the maximum loss. And last is risk and control matrix. We will discuss it in our last presentation in a much detail that with respect to each risk, what control we have. So, what's our control? What's the risk? We are mapping each other. Okay, like for example, for employee frauds, our control is like segregation of duties. So, is it placed or not placed? Like for example, a threat of a hacker. So, whether we have placed a firewall, so like that. So, these risks are and controls are related. If you have any questions, so up till here, so please. Now we come to the fourth step, integration of risks. That's uh, simply we will consolidate all identified risks. We will consolidate the likelihood and overall impact of each risk on key performance indicators. Because there is a possibility that if there is a fraud, our net profit will be reduced. If there is a loss to our reputation, our sales will reduce as a result of that. Bottom line, net profit will reduce. So that impact we consolidate. But okay, with all these risks, what, what will be the impact on our each key performance indicator? Align risks with your business objectives. So this alignment, this consolidation process. After that, assess and prioritize the risk. The five step, look, if the risk is extreme, it's the number one priority. If risk is high, number two, then moderate, number three, and then low risk, number four. It's not possible to address all risks at one time. So once they are identified for extreme risks, these are the highest priorities. So what to do with them? That's the case. Then uh, high risks. We work on them and then moderate and then lower risk areas. This is another way of prioritization. Likelihood is on horizontal axis and magnitude is on vertical axis. So if something is like for example number 4, it means it has moderate magnitude but high likelihood. So it's very important for us. Similarly number 7. High magnitude but no likelihood like, like earthquake or like hurricane. So in that case, contingency planning. If risk is at number one, moderate likelihood and low magnitude, so this we can manage with our routine controls like segregation of duties or like exercise or whatever. After doing this exercise, now we come to treat and exploit risks which is the yes please uh, you identified the uh, uh, priorities of the risk yes. just by the magnitude and the uh, like you know, yes, yes, yes. how about our ability to control this risk like if, if, if I had a very high yeah. uh, risk yet I know that that kind of risk like the natural risk I can mm -hmm. have enough control shouldn't I be putting more ex Emphasizing more the, the risk that mm. I can actually control. With mm. the actually, in that case, usually what happens is that you select the uh, strategy of avoiding risk. So I'm coming to that. So I'll explain it. That these scenarios that if a risk is high magnitude and high likelihood, and we are unable to control. So what to do? So ideal way is like for example, if insurance is possible, you can do with that. If that's not possible then you can just leave the business. So this is one strategy. Like for example, with cash, cash handling, risk is high. Likelihood is high and magnitude is sometimes high. So companies decide to avoid that risk at all. They do not deal in cash, they receive only cross checks. So they are avoiding the a particular risk. That's it. So I'll explain it in more detail here. <coughs> now look, these are different strategies, so the first bar is your overall risk, 
as I explained you, risk avoidance. If the company thinks that we are unnecessarily taking this risk like dealing in cash and our business is like that that we can refuse our customers to accept cash. Our business is like that. We are able to do that. So why not to avoid that? Similarly, another example is that for example, our factories or our offices in an area which is, uh, you can say there is high likelihood of earthquake there. So a way is to move your office to another location where uh, risk of earthquake is low. So this is avoidance. So in the scenarios where we are unable to control the risk, so usually risk avoidance is the strategy. Then the other way is risk transfer. An example is insurance, obvious example that for fire losses, for sometimes for theft, sometimes for some other risks, we have this insurance. We are transferring that risk to an insurance company which has pooled the risks of a large number of people and now the risk is not too much. The third thing is risk mitigation. That we usually we perform our internal control or some additional controls other than the internal control. After doing all this, you see that with every strategy risk is reducing. But even by implementing all these things, there is certain risk is there. So this risk is called residual or accepted risk. So you have accepted that risk. Is that okay? Actually, every time risk, taking risk is uh, not uh, or mitigating risk is not the solution. Sometimes risk is an opportunity as well. Like for example, for exchange rate movement. There is a possibility exchange rate will move in, a, in an unfavorable direction. There, that's the risk. Other possibilities that exchange rate will move in favorable direction, it's an opportunity. So some companies with a good or with a heavy risk appetite, what they do, they take the risk, okay, we accept that risk, if there will be loss, we will bear it, but if there will be gain, we will earn that. So like that. Yeah. On the other side, your return will also be high in that case, because although uh, you have high risk in certain industries like poultry or like uh, any other high risk business, but you will have rate of return will also be higher there, so it will compensate. So, like for example, there is a capital assets pricing model, I think you will be aware with that, that there is a risk free rate of return, which is usually on government security and like that, and all other investments, they offer a premium on that, on the basis of risk, high risk, high premium. So that's why you see that uh, return, rate of return on illegal activities like smuggling, it's very high. Like drugs, it's very high. Why? Risk is also very high. So risk is compensating or due to that high risk, so the people will be attracted only by the high rate of return. That's it. So can we say, we are discussing business Investment risk. Investment risk is a part of business risk. Definitely. It's a part of business risk. You can categorize it in financial risk area. It's part of your business risk. Well, the cost of keeping the risk from the risk risk, you never talk about the cost of keeping risk risk. Even when you have risk avoidance that moving the office, that involves a very high cost. Uh, is that by itself a risk? Uh, that is definitely a risk. Sometimes cost of managing the risk is higher than the probable benefit. Exactly. So, so it come in the future. yeah, definitely. Yeah, it's I'll discussing uh, that definitely. That for example, if we are going to manage the risk, it may cost us more. That's why this residual risk is there that we found that okay, cost of managing the risk is higher than cost of 
uh, the benefit of managing risk. So in that case, you will uh, either avoid or accept. So only two strategies are possible. But like for example, as uh, you explained, that cost of moving the office from one city to other city, the cost will be very high for a company. That a large number of number of people may have to relocate their residence as well. So in that case, company may face the risk. Okay, if possible, we can construct our building like that. That it's earthquake proof, or if that's not possible, just to face the risk. So that's the last. That's the last strategy. Cost is low. So look for example here. This is the risk avoidance. Quit the activity. This is one way. Transfer the risk. Mitigate the risk with control, with hedging, with credit management, with business continuity planning, or accept the risk. So these are the four possible strategies. Or uh, if you would like to add something, so you do that. Now you see the risk register is now complete. So now the scenario is that with all this activity, previously it was blank, now it's complete. You have risk, you have its impact, you have consequence, you have likelihood, you have level of risk. Then you have already prioritized the risk and last is how to treat the risk. These are the possibilities. And the last step is monitor and review, which is normally with the management. Usually, first six steps they are normally performed with the help of a risk consultant. But after that, monitoring and review is with the management. And initial setup for monitoring and review is with risk experts. Like for example, now look. First thing is to develop the key risk indicators, KRIs. Like KPIs, we have KRIs as well. So what, what are these? I will uh, give you an example. Uh, a few examples I will give you. Risk governance, your policies, procedures for risk management. Establishing a separate risk management department. That is one way of to monitor. Risk register. Risk register we already discussed. Risk reporting. So, developing a reporting framework for your risk management. Many companies uh, will have, you can see the investment portfolio and what's happening to your investments. And finally, the internal audit. So, in some companies, instead of establishing a separate risk management department, they use internal audit as the risk management. Team. So, this is, practice is very common. So, now can you please uh, share? or identify some key risk indicators that might be so we will appreciate something comes from your side okay like market share market share is decreasing it's a risk risk indicator sorry changes in technology decreasing utilization so what's the percentage utilized of your plant like that. Similarly, number of direct competitors for market risk, loss caused by frauds during the period. If nature of industry is that frauds are very common in that, so you can use this. Number of significant internal control weaknesses reported from internal audit reports. Percentage of price fluctuation, bad debts written off, this is related to credit risk. Avoidable losses during the period. These are a few examples. Sorry? Scarcity of resources. Excellent. So, how resources are scarce. And as you identified earlier, cost of each risk. So, of cost of risk management. That may be a key risk indicator. So, the cost is. Yeah. Sorry? Price. Key employees, yeah, utilization of skills of employees. So, if you can measure it, you have some mechanism, some index for that. So it's like your impact on customer satisfaction index, like that. So, these are related to KPIs, but their uh, side is, you can say, they are oriented towards not on performance, they are oriented towards risk and its management. 
so after all of that we have uh, other issues related to ERM a few issues first is why ERM this is the first issue so can you please help me in that that why do you think that ERM is essential in your company especially related to your business to avoid the risk to avoid the risk fine what else yes please take corrective action fine to be prepared for that yes yes please so get the opportunity before yes to be proactive like that before uh, just uh, like for example i have seen in many companies uh, during my experience that companies uh, this appreciation of this risk management it comes once some incident is there like a fraud incident yes please <coughs> sorry uh, penalties so to avoid penalties like that to increase the profitability yes. to safeguard assets to safeguard the assets so that so all most of these things are already yeah the same so reduce losses enhance or improve business processes improve reputation like for example if reputation of your company is that we are pioneers in implementation of risk management so that will have definitely a positive impact on your business so enhanced control reduce penalties as you identified secured information effective use of technology few of surprises this is also because if something goes wrong like a fraud in an organization so it's a surprise or a shock for top management usually what i have said so in order to avoid that so why not to prevent it before it occurs effective decision making improve corporate governance so some benefits this is uh, a maturity model of organizations you will be interested into that and this is the approach over the years initially there is traditional insurance there's a traditional way of risk management but when the insurance problem is that it covers only a few risks like fire risk you can cover health risk okay you can cover and a few risks only not uh, all of them after that when an organization matures so we come to process discipline risk risk management like internal audit so at this stage internal audit is developed and internal audit is working on improving internal control traditionally the internal audit is considered a cost simply and the people who are only there to bother the finance people so this is just about the impression of internal audit but in reality now in modern world they are business partners they are the, in the company to improve the profitability so they are not a cost center now internal audit is becoming a profit center as well because they are not contributing to the business by saving losses and maybe by improving the profitability of the company after that third step of mature now the organization is maturing in the risk management area so portfolio modeling financing like for example you are appointing a portfolio manager who is managing the market risk who is managing the exchange rate risk or interest rate risk so like that so now you are becoming proactive into these areas then organization will mature further and integrated risk will be there because previously what happened that risk was being managed but it was managed by individual departments or individual sections within themselves now it's integrated across the organization internal audit as well as the risk management department and maybe the finance department and it department they are usually the leaders and they also in that marketing and human resource and production and other departments into that and entire risk is managed across the organization and the last model is or last stage in this is enterprise risk management you have a full fledged department for that who is monitoring the erm and entire activity is being monitored by that guy 
So now you can think about your organization where it is in this. So if you would like to share it, you will be welcome where your organization is. Another way of the same thing. In mature organizations, usually risk management is tribal and heroic. If chief executive, he is, he has good risk appetite and he is conscious about the risk management, what he will do? So he will more focus on that, more policies and procedures, internal control, insurance, credit risk management, everything. But if that guy is not conscious about the risk, so there will be no risk management or little risk management. Then specialist silos, actually this is also, uh, you can say risk is being managed but finance is managing only the uh, treasury risk or exchange rate risk, internal audit is managing the compliance risk, marketing is managing the credit risk, like that. So different departments are managing their own areas. Then is top down, so management is concerned now that no risk management is important. Then is systematic and last is risk intelligent. So in risk intelligent departments, there are specialists, risk specialists who are working on each key risk indicator and working on that. Now the last thing is key factors for ERM success. So these are very important and from my experience in this discipline, if you have an agreed risk strategy with top management, ERM implementation will be successful otherwise it will fail. Clear governance frameworks, if you will follow like CAS or COSO or uh, for information risk management COVID model, so some established structure which is used by the organization, so it will work. Efficient risk management processes like your point that cost of risk management should not be more than the benefit. So there should be a monitoring of risk management cost as well. Appropriate technology, if you are not utilizing appropriate technology, ERM will fail. Coordination of risk management functions, usually if it's not properly coordinated and people are not aware what these two, three guys, they daily come to the office and they sit on their desk and they go back. So ERM will fail in that case. Actually risk consultants or risk managers, they should interact with the people. They should get information from them in the right culture and capability. So if culture is not good and if culture is not supporting risk management, if people are looking the risk management as a burden on them, we are doing our work from 9 o'clock till 8 o'clock in the evening and these guys are coming and they are increasing our work. So if that type of attitude towards uh, the risk management it will not work. So that's all uh, and if uh, you have any questions, now we have uh, some time for discussion. So your questions, your experience, we would like to share that with you. So we will really appreciate that. Anybody would like to share something? I know this from, I know this from the examples that uh, were shown during the presentation that uh, finance institutions are uh, most concerned with this uh, exactly. risk management. I agree with you. Uh, now, uh, my colleague and I. Uh,